Evangelistic Impact This message is interpreted and broadcast by Word of Inspiration International Radio from Bukaramanga, Colombia, which is an outreach of the worldwide missionary movement. Let's listen to our speaker, the founder of the worldwide missionary movement, Reverend Wisem Ortiz, through the voice of our interpreter. During the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem, under Nehemiah's lordship, he together with his people had to face big hindrances, difficulties, and open opposition which seriously threatened the progress of the work. The first was some balance anger because Nehemiah was in Jerusalem to start its rebuilding. After that, came the accusation of rebellion that this evil personage, Sambalant, leveled against Nehemiah. Once the rebuilding of the walls had already started, these very same men, Sambalant and Tobiah, laughed and mocked the work by saying that if a fox would go up the wall, it would be destroyed. When half of the work was finished, Sambalant, Tobiah, and others as always conspired, all of them together, to come and fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. The great leader, Nehemiah, always faced each hindrance by praying and it says, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. After all the work of the world was concluded, the very symbolic, pretending to behave as a sheep, sent a message to Nehemiah, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ano. But they thought to do me mischief. The wise Nehemiah's answer faded away the plot once more. Nehemiah said, I'm doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? Will I leave it? and came down to you? For five times running, some ballads repeated the same message, but Nehemiah always rejected it. After that, some ballad made a last effort to hinder the fulfillment of the work. He rented a false prophet for telling Nehemiah to hide because that night he would be killed. Nehemiah, knowing God's will, was not deceived, neither intimidated. He answered, Should such a man as I flee? And who is there that, being as I am, would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. After all these struggles, the wall was finished, and when all our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was craft of our God. Beloved, when we study this part of Israel's story, we find the marked parallel with the short but glorious history of the modest worldwide missionary movement's efforts. Haven't we faced anger, opposition, persecution, accusation, mockery, rejection, conspiracy, betrayal, hypocrisy, threat, false prophecies, etc. Everything, but thank God in all these situations and in every moment, through prayer and total dependency on God, we have received God's help and direction to neutralize every attack and opposition and to continue moving forward being conscious that God has also assigned to us a great work in this world. This deep conviction that we are in the center of God's will has not ceased in us. On the contrary, it's more and more. And we continue pressing forward throughout highways and byways, across America and around the world, spreading the glorious gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. This imbalance the Tobias, the Jesims, 
the Arabian, the Alexanders, the ones who become wealthy by taking the money that belongs to God's work, the ones who want to destroy the work are defeated. And in all these things we are more than conquerors because God always gives us the victory in Jesus Christ. God has really assigned to us the fulfillment of a great work. It is the great work of the evangelization of the world, the great work of the preservation and proclamation of the genuine testimony of Pentecost. It is the great work of keeping the flame of the supernatural and miraculous ministry of the Holy Spirit's gifts burning, free of extremism, unbelief, and fanatism. It is the great work of growing, but at the same time keeping ourselves small. It is the great work of keeping a clean testimony with no mixtures, neither compromises with the worldly things. This conviction and comprehension of the fact that God has entrusted us a great work is the possession and passion of all God's servants joined to this great effort. And when someone is not faithful to God, neither to his work, nor to this word, nor to the confidence received, and betrays God's consecration and work, God himself casts the person out. The ungodly are not so but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. The sinners shall not stand in the congregation of the righteous. When Judas betrayed Jesus, he acknowledged his sin and said, I have sinned, and went and hanged himself. Others do not acknowledge the betrayal they have committed, and when they are found in this condition, they behave as Isaiah 32, 6 and 7 says. For the vile person will speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity, to practice hypocrisy, and to utter error against the Lord, to make empty the soul of the hungry, and will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. The instruments also of the charl are evil. He deceiveth wicked devices, to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaketh right. Beloved, in this great work, it doesn't matter the attacks of the enemy from the north, the south, the east, or the west, from inside or outside. With the help of the Most High, let me repeat it, with the help of God, we will not lower the banner of the worldwide evangelization, the missionary work, the sound doctrine, the clean testimony the sacrifice for the work and the saving of the lost people, the dependency on God and the obedience to His Word. When God ordered me to leave Cuba at the end of the 1960s, after almost 17 years of missionary work in that country, as there was much work to do, I asked the Lord, God, and the work. He answered to me, The work? The work is mine. Then he showed me what I had to do, which I did. And certainly the work is the Lord's. This is his work. We are his laborers. This is his labor. We are his helpers. This is his vineyard. We are his farming. This is his vine. We are his branches. This is his church. We are his redeemed. This is his body. We are his members. This is his possession. We are his servants. This is his kingdom. We are his subjects. This is his family. We are his children. This is his inheritance. We are his heirs. This is his city. We are his citizens. My friend, to the work of God, to the kingdom of God, To the city of God will no filthy thing, neither any abominable or liar person enter, but just the ones whose name are written in the Lamb's book of life. Do you want to belong to God's work, to his church, to his kingdom, to his family, to his city? Repent of all your sins and accept Jesus as your great Savior. Backslider. 
come back to the Lord. My friend and brother, if you are sick, God heals you right now. Let's pray. Oh God, I ask you that these people who are coming to you may be saved and transformed by the power of your word and your Holy Spirit. Father, heal the sick miraculously, that the healing virtue of your word may go across each sick body, and each one may be gloriously healed in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. If this message was a blessing for you, write us at word at inspiration at hotmail.com Visit our website www.imiw.org or call us at 577-64-2286 God bless you.